Welcome to the 2024 baseball season preview with head coach first year Brian Folds. Coach, if you could just give us an opening statement on the state of the Akron baseball program. Yeah, I know we're excited to go and um, ready to go. I think it's we we it's, we're Northeast Ohio and we haven't missed a single day on the field. So uh, it's one of the blessings having the turf field and. Uh, but also the weather, like it was 62 degrees outside today. We're outside and inner squatting Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, so we got to see a lot, a lot more than we thought we would get to see. Um, really like where we are defensively and offensively and um, on the mound. We're, we're competing a little bit, and you know, I think that's always one of those things that gets better as the season gets going. Um, on the mound, it's throwing strikes more competitively instead of just missing up when you start missing down. But um, I think we're in a good spot, and you know, I got a week left to go to you know, suit up against Illinois. Talk a little bit about your style of play so that fans know when they come to see Akron baseball what to be, uh, what to be expecting. High energy. Uh, like the guys said, we're competing in everything we do. Uh, we're going to play really good defense, you know. To win a championship, and that's our overall goal, is you look at, you know, LSU wins national championship, they're top five in the defense every year. And, um, you know, I won the MAC in 2017 when I was with Ohio. And, you know, we had a really good defensive team, and that to me, it's going to be playing really good defense, making the routine plays, um, offensively, be a dynamic run scoring offense. Um, and then what that means is, hey, we have to hit for power, hit for power. If not, we're going to execute the small ball game to figure out the way to score runs. Um, you know, and then on the mound, it's going to be competitive, throwing strikes, um, forcing contact, making the guys beat us and not beat ourselves. That's that's the whole plan. Being that you coached at OU at one point, you know the conference. What does it take? What have you told the guys that it takes, knowing the experience that you have, to win the Mid American Conference? Yeah, it's going to take a lot of competitive guys. First off, foremost, it's you know we're right now, unfortunately, still a one bid league. I think that can change here in the in the future. Um, but hey, you got to get to be one of the top six teams, um, and that's going to, like you said, taking care of the baseball, throwing strikes, you know. If playing small ball, if we have to, it's you know we had a inner squad where we scored three runs in an inning, and we didn't hit the ball out of the infield, and that's for me on the defense side of things, it's not a good thing. But then also on the offense side of things, really good to see that we can do that. And next time we go out, we hit three home runs. Um, so again, it's something to we have a balanced lineup, and it's really just compete your butt off, and you know score more runs than the other team. It's really there's no really one way to do it. Um, that's what we did Ohio, when I, we won in Ohio was we got really good pitching in the MAC tournament and play really good defense. And one game's 3-2, 4-3, and I think we won the championship. We're down, I think, six runs the Eastern Michigan in the eighth inning and scored seven and somehow won the game. <laughs> so I don't think there's a special sauce to it. It's, it's baseball. It's, you know, no matter if you're playing in California, Texas, Ohio, you know, it's all the same. Give us a little bit of a positional breakdown, starting with the outfield, moving to your infield, and then your your battery, your pitcher and catcher. Yeah, so outfielder, I think we have one of the best defensive outfielders, outfields I've seen. Um, you know, I think there's four or five guys that could be playing there in any given day. Um, I think in center field, Evan put Tones, a freshman. Um, I think he has a capability of being one of the top freshmen in the MAC and maybe, you know, MAC player of the year as a freshman or freshman of the year, sorry. Um, Jack Poise, obviously, he's leading here, coming back. Um, he'll be playing in left field, and you still got – we haven't mentioned Ian Pennington, Sam Seeker, you know, Austin Lafferty. Those guys are all in the mix, right, you know, right with everybody. Um, Infield-wise, going to be a lot of new faces. <laughs> I can tell you that. Um, if Fisher Pye came from Central Arizona, he'll be a shortstop. Um, Sam, Sam Seeker, sorry. Uh, he's in right, sorry. He wants to play first base, but he can't. Um, Charlie Ree, second base. Max Bowman could be at second base. Brandon Cavey could be at second base. Brandon Cavey, James Strong could be at first. Um, Henry Heyman over at third base from Barton Community College. He was freshman of the year in the Jayhawk League. And, um, and then we have Nikki Sackett, who defensively can play all three. And Charlie Chevrolet can play all three. And um, we're in a good spot defensively. And, I think, like they, you heard the guys say, it's one of the big improvements from the years past. Um, catching wise, you know, kind of helped us, I think, this year with Sprocket going down. Gave Andrew Horvath some time to 
get a lot of time back there last year, and he became one a really good catcher, and Sprocket's phenomenal back there. So I think we have two defensive guys that can both actually hit, um, which is going to be a benefit, you know, in the long run because we don't have to wear one guy out throughout the whole year. We can split it up, you know, game by game and um, keep those bats healthy throughout the spring in the lineup. And on the mound, it's, it's all up in the air right now. Um, in my 15 years of coaching in college, we haven't had – one rotation that was week one be the same at the middle of the year or even the, in the end of the year. Um, you know, so it's – we really haven't set in stone what that will be opening weekend. We're playing four games, so it's kind of a wait-and-see mode and figure that out probably, you know, early next week when we get things rolling. Last thing I've got for you um, right now, Coach, is just talk about that non-conference schedule, where you're going, who you're taking on, and the challenges those teams bring to your program. Yeah, so we open up at Wake Forest Tournament. Um, got a doubleheader opening day against Illinois, which would be a good one. Looking forward to that. Um, also got Fordham and then Wake Forest, one game each. Um, and then we go to the Citadel, and then we go to Duke. Um, it's going to be a good challenge. You know, obviously Wake Forest lost in the national semifinals last year. Um, Duke was a super regional team last year. Um, both are ranked top 10 preseason, Wake Forest number one. Illinois is always, you know, top to middle of the pack in the Big Ten. And um, the Citadel is also – they're supposed to have a pretty good year this year and um, a lot of returners. And it's going to be a good challenge, and it's going to get us ready for the MAC. And uh, so the MAC, like I said, it's, it's a really good conference. It's been through it, and you need to face some good arms and some good teams to prepare yourself for that. Um, you have a lot of returners this season. What growth have you seen in these returners throughout the preseason? Yeah, so we've seen a lot of growth on just one leadership. Um and their energy and the practice, how they, they come into it. We, we run a high demanding practice. Um, it's competitive all in aspects of it. And um, it's one of those things that keeps getting better. They're not complacent. Um, we brought in, I think it's 26 new guys on the roster um, with a lot of, like I said, majority of their starters coming back. Uh, but it's also pushing those starters that, hey, they know it's just not going to be handed to them. Uh, something that they compete for every day. Um, you just mentioned the newcomers. How have they been impressing you throughout practice? They bring it every day. Um, they really do. It's been awesome. Um, I think we maybe have had one or two practices throughout the fall and this, so far this early spring that's been like, hey, where are you guys at today? Um, but they're mentally there every single day. They're locked in. They they want to win. And that's the nice thing about it. There's not coming here. They don't. It's like, hey, we just don't want to play baseball. It's, hey, they want to win. They want to make the MAC tournament. Some of these guys have been here since it got brought back and haven't experienced that. And, you know, they want to do that, not just get there, but they also want to try to win it. Um, I asked the players this. What game are you most excited to play this season? Game one. <laughs> game one, it's, you know, I say, hey, be in the present. That's a big thing. Take it game by game, pitch by pitch. Uh, so really just – we talked about this week, and then on Tuesday, our first practice week, it was like, hey, this week's tough. I get it. We won't overlook it to next week. We'll be hopefully right now practicing at Wake Forest at this time next week. Um, so it's an easy week just to go and just try to get through it, but we need to get better. Um, and so we're really just focused on that game one. And then after game one, I'll be game two will be my favorite. And after that, so forth, then let's take it game by game. The hitting lineup lost a couple of heavy hitters. What have you been doing to try and like replace those guys who either transferred or graduated? Yeah, I think we've done a good job. Like our guys said, we're not here just trying to replace one guy. It's, it has to be a one through nine type deal. And um, I think one through nine, you're going to see guys that are – it's a dynamic offense. That are one game, you know, we're going to play the long ball if we can. And the next day it's going to be, hey – we're going to play the small ball, and to me, that's signs of a really good offense. We can do all phases of it. You have three captains this season. What leadership skills did you see in them to choose them? One, guys, they do the right thing all the time. It's one of our biggest things is do the right thing, and they, they do that. Um, they Guys follow them. That's what big – most with the leaders, it's, hey, you can be a leader, but if guys aren't going to follow what you do, you're not going to be a really good leader. Um, and I talk about they have a lot of feel. They know when a guy needs to the arm around them. They know when they get in someone's butt. Um, they do a really good job of balancing that out, and they've been outstanding so far, and I don't expect anything else from them throughout the year. Talk about the team's chemistry going into next week and how important it is 
to start the season and carry through the spring. Yeah, they, this group's been through a lot. Um, if you really look at it, they've been through – I'm the fourth coach for some of these guys in four years. <laughs> um, so they've been through a lot. They're very – it was already a very tight-knit group. Um, but what the returners that have been here for a while did a really good job is they bought into what we were doing right away. They brought in the new guys right away, and um, it's been outstanding with what they've done, and the chemistry is – it's so far so good, you know, but again, we're 0-0 and, and <laughs> storm's coming, but hopefully we built a good enough foundation that, you know, when, we, when the storm does come, we're ready for it.